want to make sure uh, that you understand we do not uh, put mask above God and all are welcome in the church. Doesn't, if you wear a mask, don't wear a mask. It's your business. But uh, don't be offended by those that do. And those of us that do, don't be offended by those that don't. Uh, protect yourself to the best of your ability. You are brilliant in your own way. <laughs> everybody's, everybody, what do they say? Everybody's a 10 somewhere or somehow, you know. And uh, you know, some of us are brilliant in some ways. Anyway, never mind. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. <clears throat> this is an interesting proverb. Read it again, and, and you'll get maybe a little bit more sense of it later. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Lord, we pray that you would have your way. Let everything be done, everything be said, everything, Lord, for your glory. If it's not for your glory, Lord God, remove us. I pray in the name of Jesus, by your authority and by your word, that you would work where we cannot. Work, Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name. And we give you glory. And amen. Turn to somebody and just say, I'm glad you're here today. I don't know. Just tell somebody something. Amen. You can greet them or you can sit down on them. I don't care. Amen. Amen. So uh, the church is starting to look a little bit more similar to what it used to, thankfully. Uh, not, not there yet, but we'll get there. We just keep plugging along. And uh, don't get COVID. <laughs> so I, I talked to a, a friend of mine this week that their church is um, going through their third cycle of COVID through the church. It's going through the church. And in fact, I've got a dear friend of mine, Kevin Porter, Kevin and Diane Porter from Lufkin. He went in the hospital last night. I want to pray for him, keep them in their prayers. But, but um, you know, we've got to trying to think of my wife uses the phrase and I and I think I taught her but she she uses it if you run in the rain you're gonna get wet I'm just playing she said that I'm just kidding so amen so a great gift is given to us an amazing gift a a power a powerful gift that we fail to recognize is ours a a powerful gift that we often fail to recognize within our power I'm not talking about Superman powers, but this power truly does start wars. It has, it brings peace, it, um, it, it instigates romances, and it kills relationships. The power that you have, of course, I speak of the power of our tongue, the power of our words. And with this little member called the tongue, we can bless and we can curse. Uh, we, can, we can blame or we can claim. The, the tongue with the mouth, we have great power. And I'm going to intentionally go through a few steps, and I want you to understand the importance and the power of the tongue first. I didn't hear it often, but when I was a young man, I heard it enough to remember it and not keep saying it. But uh, the conversation went somewhere like this. Son, go do this. I can't. Of course, the next phrase that... Uh, come into my hearing was uh, can't never could do nothing and I don't know if that double negative thing is in that play there but that was the way I heard it can't never could do nothing and uh, you know and, and it was imp it was imprinted into my mind don't start with the can't start with I'll try or start with I'll go I'll do it I'll, I'll do my best and it's so it, it's not possible to overestimate the power of of our words. It really is not possible. I know that we're all sitting here, we're all like wise and all that kind of stuff, but believe me, it's not possible for us to overestimate the power of our words. Words greatly impact those that hear as well, and I'll get here in a little bit, as well as those that speak them. So whether we hear them or we speak them, our words have great power. Tragically, the the scripture bears this out. I'll give you some passages momentarily. But the, the unwise not only destroy others with their words, but they destroy themselves. We don't recognize it often as, as, an, as, as destructive as maybe a, a knife wound or a paper cut, you know. But it's there, and it is their own words that alienate us from each other, that, that destroy relationships. It's our own words that, that cause people 
to shun us. That, that is the, our word. The power of our words is incredible. The wise and the righteous do not, and I know this for a fact because I'm, I'm not saying I'm wise and righteous, but I don't like this. I don't like listening to foul-mouthed people. It just, it just gets all over me. I just, ugh. I remember one time I was, and I tell stories all the time, but I was, my wife and I were in North Zulch at the gas station. I don't know why we stopped there, but we did gas station early in the time that we was building the church, and uh, there was a, there's this big car pulled up while I was getting gas. We was in a, the, the white pickup. The kids were sitting in the back, and, and this car pulled up, and rap music was playing, and the top was off. It was a convertible, and boom, boom, and the words, and I was like, oh, my word. I mean, of course, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, this is crazy. How can somebody listen to that? It was just perverted. And so uh, big, big, big guy got out of it. That might be why he had a convertible, because he couldn't sit in it. He was that big, eight foot tall at least uh, in my mind. And I reached over around the pump, and I said, hey, man, do you mind turning the music uh, down? I've got a wife and children right here. And I thought, you know, this, you these things flash through your mind real quick. You ever had that kind of just, poof, you're, and you imagine yourself just kind of <laughs> sprawled out with gas on you, you know? Uh, it's, and, and he goes, oh, man, I'm so sorry. And it emboldened me from that point on. I'm going to tell everybody. But I haven't had another opportunity since, so I'm not sure when that'll happen. But, the, the, but we don't like to hear perverted language. It's just a natural tendency. Even, even when we get used to it, sometimes it s astonishes us how perverted our language can get. Foul mouth, grumbling all the time, grumbling. I don't like it. The gossiper. I, I despise gossiping. I, I, I felt a twinge of gossip the other day, and I mentioned something, and I didn't mention name, I don't think, but it was just like one of those things like, oh, I shouldn't have just said, I should have just not said anything. What was, and I'm, I'm confessing, okay, I don't, but we all kind of have that, that tendency to say things that we're really not, uh, really not supposed to say. I think recently, I, I, I do practice what I preach. Uh, recently, we had an experience with our daughter-in-law, our, our, um, our favorite daughter-in-law, and she's amazing, and and uh, we, she had an, an emergency appendis, ep, appendectomy, ep, appendectomy. That is the craziest word. It's appendicitis, ep, appendix, and then appendectomy. It's like, where'd that come from? But it, so I'm, I'm, we're, I'm hesitant because they didn't say, tell everybody. And so I just tell them they had a, an emergency appendectomy. And then come to find out, it, and, and we knew at that point there were some other issues. And she's going to start finding them. But you've got to be careful that you don't say things that others haven't given you permission. Nobody likes it, especially when they're the one being talked about. Amen. That's the wise person. The wise person, though, guards their words, humbles their language to comfort those that are broken, under, uh, humbles their ability to, to understand with empathy what others are going through. This is, I'm not trying to say that, you know, oh, I'm wise, but you've got to be wise. A wise the scripture says in Proverbs 25 and 11, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Now, I've heard that scripture all my life, and I'm thinking, apples of gold, pictures of silver. Have you ever thought about that? I'm thinking, what in the world does that mean? So I studied it. I spent probably an hour on it yesterday. Just, what is this talking about? Uh, pictures, of, uh, uh, apples of gold and pictures. Well, I've discovered, going back to the original Greek, that pictures actually doesn't match our English. And it, it's, it doesn't match it. Imagine, imagine it this way. A golden, a true golden apple, the fruit, gold, solid, not, you know, the little thin layer of stuff. A solid gold apple displayed on a vase of silver. What does it mean? It means that oftentimes... The word at the right time is often more precious than its source. So foolish people can say wise things. Thank God. Amen? Innocent people can say the right thing at the right moment. It's not the person that says it, but it's the gift of wisdom that comes out. What an amazing blessing when we realize the importance of this verse. It says a, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and in pictures of silver. A word, I, I, I did this myself, so I've got to be very careful to read it right. A, wor a good word at the right time is often more precious than its source. Incredible. The last phrase or the last portion of our passage that we opened up with 
is very telling. It says people who love the tongue, who like to talk, <laughs> will eat the fruit of their words. They have no choice. It's called the law of the, har- of the, law of the harvest. You, you, you reap what you sow, and we are all forced to, to reap, to eat of those words that we plant. And these, these are, are just, uh, just the beginning. There are those that just love to hear themselves talk. You ever heard those people? I've seen them. I've seen them. They just love to hear themselves talk. Um, when I was young, I had to look in the mirror to see that person. But, uh, you know, I'm... Proverbs 10 and 19 says, In the multitude of words there wanteth no sin. But he that refrains his lips is wise. It goes on and on and on. But these, these, th- those who are wise learn to tame their tongue. L- let me move on. All of this obviously begins in the heart. Y- 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 your tongue is a projection of what's in the heart. You, you know that. And so this is just one more reason, by the way. Those of you wondering why we need full of the Holy Ghost, we need a clean heart. We need to be able to speak pure. We need to speak, be able to speak uh, instructively and helpful, not, not destructively. Amen. And so God greatly desires that we, the people of the church, the people of God, God greatly desires that we use the power of our words to bring glory to his name and to advance the kingdom. Your words, you should have a quota every day. I mean, I'm seriously, you tithe on your money and give all that kind of stuff, you should kind of tithe on your words. They say we speak somewhere between 25 and 40,000 words a day. You should give 2,500 to 4,000 to God. Is that not practical? Is that not acceptable? Is, could that not be your reasonable service? To speak of the goodness of God, to sing of the goodness of God, to let others hear what you have to say about your God. Man, what a blessing that would be. I think we would have a harvest like we wouldn't imagine. James wrote it, like, he said it like this, if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion New Living says that it's, a, it's, it's worthless. It's, it's worthless, a worthless religion. <laughs> Man, what's the point? You know, you come to church, you go, in your presence, and then you leave and you just go, you know? It's just, uh, what, 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 what's the whole, you sacrificed an entire morning. God help us. And if you, are, you and I are serious about our walk with God, containing and controlling our tongue should be one of our top priorities. You think about that for a moment. I'm, I'm teaching, treaching, whatever you want to call it, but tongue control is a real thing. I'm not talking about the tongue of a trailer either. I'm talking about the tongue in our, house, in our mouth. Tongue control. Speaking life into other people's life. Speaking healing. Speaking promises. Speaking positive. Speak, speaking things that bring life. James says that if we don't properly use our tongue, then our religion is worthless. On a positive note, he said it like this. <laughs> if anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man able to keep his whole body in check. Now, we are not all perfect men, but we are all working hard. Amen? Amen. All right, so we'll, we, we move on. So if we can master our tongue, the use of our words, we can master anything. Uh, James uses, uh, if I remember correctly, James uses the metaphor of the horse and the bit. Uh, I had this, this uh, what do you call it, this, uh, uh, pe- uh, uh, this I forgot, what you, this epiphany. There you go. The, a, a few years ago, and I, I, I was looking, I, was, I think I was in the doctor's office, and I saw a picture of these, and y'all probably seen the same picture. It's like scan, print, scan, print. And uh, it was on the wall, this big picture, and these horses running across a field by the beach. You see the beach, and then all the little grass is growing, and it's like, oh, so romantic. And I had this, this epiphany that, that without a bit, all they are worth is beauty, and that's it. But when you put a bit in a horse's mouth, that horse can then become powerful and really begin to be used for the good of all people, including himself. So the bit has got great power in a horse. And the, and the Bible goes on to say that the, the rudder of a ship, and, and many of us have gone on cruises or was in the Navy or whatever it was, and, or, or we had a little John boat like me, you know, and it's like, it's incredible that that little bitty, that, that, I mean, I used, to ki- I used to kayak until my wife sold mine in the garage sale $50. Anyway, won't talk about it there. We won't talk about it. I didn't mean to bring that up. 
I'm still angry. Not really. I'm not angry. She's still with, with me. But, uh, man, I used to kayak and had that little bitty, that little, little bitty thing about that. And it would steer that entire, just, just as, as slick as, a, I mean, just incredible. And that is the power of controlling our mouth. We can guide our heart. We can guide our minds. We can guide our future. We can guide our education with the power of our tongue. I can. I, I, I might not do it today, but I'm going to do my best tomorrow. I might have failed today, but, but the, having that mindset, and I'm not talking about just a, 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 what do they call it, positive mental attitude, although that might help. I'm not against that, amen? In fact, I think everybody likes that. But as always, Satan, Satan wants a piece of the action, as always. And he wants you and I to take our tongue and use it against the things that God wants us to do. He wants to use it. He wants to keep us ignorant and, and weak. He wants to keep us at war with one another. Satan likes, he likes war. He likes uh, infighting and confusion. That's Satan. That's his plan. He loves, I mean, he feeds on that. I know people that must be full of Satan because they feed on it too, but not, not anybody here. But he, he loves to destroy the body, the Bible, the, the people of God. He loves to get people inside and just argue over the simplest thing. That, like I said earlier, the mask, you're wearing a mask, you ungodly creature. And then others are like, you're not wearing a mask, you ungodly creature. And other ones are like, you must not have any faith. I mean, it's, just, it's like, what in the world? Just live and let live, right? Give grace, receive grace, give mercy, receive mercy. Amen? It's kind of nice that way. We all kind of feed off of that a little bit. And if you're always picking on somebody, you go, well, number one, you're probably always going to have a bad attitude because you're never going to find enough people to not pick on. There's always people out there. But our words are intimately connected to our works. Our words. You know, we, we had a phrase when I was a kid, and y'all have heard it a million times, or maybe not a million, but close. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But that's not true. We figure that out after we're a little older. You know, you're eight years old, and that's what you, you know. But in reality, words hurt us. And so words, words, you know, it's like how many souls are in the, in the, the ditch of life because of words that somebody spoke and just moved on without consideration. How many times should we, how many of us should, should go back and just think through our life and just, you know what, I need them to know I don't not, I, I love them. How many, how many times, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I've, made a, I've had to make, because I speak a lot, I've got a microphone usually when I do this, but... Um, how many times, I don't know how many times I've had to go back and say, listen, uh, you know, Brother Eugene, I'm using you, but I'm, you're not. We're copacetic, as they say. Peachy king. You know, whatever, they, it's Yankee stuff. But anyway, you know, I, I need to go back and tell him I did not. I, that's not what I meant. Y'all with me? Y'all cool? We're teaching, teaching. We'll get somewhere in a minute. We're teaching. Man, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I mean, you, this whole crowd, I, I, probably half of you, I'm, you've gotten a phone call from me that says, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I didn't, you know, that's, but, but how many people, but when, when we call on Jesus, this is the thing that we must understand. Words have power. Words have great power. And when we use Jesus, Lord, we are saved. We, Lord, Lord, I am your servant. You are my master. I am here to serve you, and you are here to, to rule me. He becomes Lord not only of our life, but Lord of our tongue, Lord of our situations. He becomes Lord of everything if we ever truly, you know, words are cheap, though. Remember that. Remember that. I, I mean, uh, you know, you got, they, they, words have value around my house, but it took a while. It took a while for us to recognize that, you know, but words are cheap. You can just say, you know, oh, you look good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> y'all know what I'm saying? The little eyebrow and the words come out and the eyebrow raises. Not equate, it's not the same. You know, you, you're so pretty. Such a sweet child. <laughs> They're in Walmart screaming and crying. Ah! <laughs> you know, no, oh, such a sweet child. No, that's a lie. <laughs> but words do have power. And when we begin to confess that Jesus is our Lord, if it's in a song or if it's in a prayer or if it's just in the middle of the day, Lord, I love you. I worship you. You are my God. You are my king. What we are in insinuating and we should intend is that, God, you are the, you are the speaker. 
You are the man. You are what, God, I want you to flow through me. I want your voice to speak through my words. I submit myself to you. But our words must be mixed with, with works. With works. If without works, words are worthless. But it's a bunch of what W's there. But without works, words are worthless. We must learn to, to use the words and back them up with some works. And our faith mixed with works is even more powerful than just our words. They're so powerful. Bear, just, just hear me for a moment. Words of faith can be so cheap, but when our words are mixed with works, there is power. So what, we, what do we say to ourselves is powerful? I said it earlier. I insinuated I was going to get around to it. Here I am. Not only words that we give others, but words we speak, they matter to us. What do our words produce in our lives? What do, what, how do they shape our future? How do, they, how do they produce fear in our lives? When our words of peace, how do they, how do they resound with our own life? What, what completion can be brought by words that are spoken properly? And what healing can be brought by the words that are spoken in love? Not only healing for those, but healing for ourselves, uh, uh, peace for ourselves. I mean, it could go on and on and on. But the greatest thing, that this is really the burden of my heart today. What, what really matters is the words we speak can bring great healing and power. She said, she said in Matthew 9 and 21, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. She said it before she ever took a step. She said it before she ever got on her hands and knees. She said it in her heart maybe, but she got to that point where she said what she meant. He said it in Luke chapter 15 and verse 17. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. He said in his mind, in his heart, in a situation, hey, there's a better place than where I'm abiding. There's more than what I've got. And I've got a daddy. I've got somebody that loves me. I know I left on bad terms, but I've got somebody that loves me. Because he said it and he mixed it with his faith and he began to work. The Bible tells us that both of these people began to walk towards their solution. But it started in their heart. One, one said in Luke chapter 17 and 15, and I'm referring to scriptures that you should know if you don't go back in your Bible and look or listen to this again and look it up. In Luke 17 and 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God how often great healing comes about because we just glorify God in the little healing we've already received oh come on church what great miracles take place because we glorify God in the little miracles that we've already experienced I believe with everything inside of me today. If you want a miracle, all you've got to do is begin to glorify God, not just in words, but in your faith and mixed with actions. I believe that God truly wants to heal someone here today. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that God is ready to heal someone here today. Maybe in their mind, maybe in their body, maybe in their relationships, maybe in their relationship with God himself. But I believe that God is searching for someone that truly has faith. Not, oh, ye of little faith, but, oh, I have never seen faith like that in my life. Why did God see his faith? Because he said, all you have to do is speak the word and it'll be done. Oh, church, if we would get a grip on the power of our words to our Savior and let it be known unto him, how timid must we be before we ever finally break down and truly experience a miracle? Amen. Timidity is a bane of the church. I'm not talking about bold in your face, 
but bold in the power of our words before God, bold in our walk with God. When we walk into the workplace, when we walk into Walmart, wherever it may be, that God would do some great work through us. But only when we say, when we say, I've said it before and you'll hear it again many times, you must speak out your burden. God, give me a soul that I can speak to. It cannot be a dream. It cannot, it cannot. Come on, church. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 10, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. God, expect, God uses our tongue as an indicator of our heart. Come on, church. My word. Oh, God, help us. Something inside of us should turn over, turn upside down, and even convict us. Some of us are in danger of our own soul because we are talking and saying things that are not right. But many of us are sitting on the sidelines waiting on God to do something, and we've not spoken it. We've not said it. We've not agreed with the Spirit in our words. Oh, come on. Let's worship him for a moment. Lord, I love you. Come on, everybody in the house. God, I worship you and honor you. Come on, speak words. Lord, I love you. I honor you. I believe, Lord God, you're going to do a miracle today. I believe, Lord, that you're going to do a great miracle today in my life, in Olivia's life, in other lives in this place today. In the name of Jesus, by your power and authority. God responds to our faith. And our faith must be expressed not just in words, but in our works. The tongue is so very powerful. We've got a couple of teachers here today. I'm not going to put them on the spot. One of them is an English uh, uh, fanatic. She drives me crazy sometimes. She said, I can. She said likewise. <laughs> I drive her crazy sometimes. <laughs> oh, man. I have to. Used to, I just put out a text, you know, a tweet, whatever, you know, an email. And now I'm over there two hours later going, is it punctuated? Is the comma go here or here? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm so unproductive nowadays because of her. <laughs> oh, but words are powerful. The words are powerful. <laughs> I didn't say the power is with you, but the words are powerful. Within you, you have the ability to bring healing, to bring completion, to bring peace, to bring, yeah, to bring romance and to bring completion in your education and, and power in your workplace and power and relationships and all those things. But really where it really matters is in your relationship with God. Your power, the power is within you to, re to reveal the heart. And thankfully, God does know the heart. And we say sometimes, or we don't say, well, God knows my heart. Kind of reminds me of the people that are married, and they come into, come into council, and they've been married for like 32 years. Not us. We've been married 32 years. I'm using that. 32 years of marriage, they come in, they sit down before the counselor, and they say, he says, you know, uh, do, you, do you love him? Oh, yes, with all my heart. And when's the last time he told him? Well, I, I tell him every day. And he looks at the man and says, do you love her? Mm-hmm. You love her with all your heart? Mm-hmm. When's the last time he told her? I don't know. It's like, well, come on now. You, you know, and he says, well, why, why don't you tell her? Well, she ought to know. Been married to her for 32 years. That's not the way things work, is it? We can all see that on a, on a marriage level. We can all see that on a boyfriend-girlfriend level. But don't do this. Don't be... By the way, here's your quick lesson. Don't be saying I love you too early. You know, hey, man, don't take him home to the mom and dad too early. Just kind of take it easy. Don't, you know, be, guard your heart. I'm, I'm, okay, let me go back. When we desire to draw near to God, when we truly desire to draw near to God, the first work is to make our lives right with him. How? In repentance. Yes, our words. God, I confess before heaven and all the angels, I am a low down, sorry, no good for nothing, <laughs> and I need you. Repentance starts in the heart, but it comes through confession. 
It starts in the heart, but it comes through expressed in understanding and a confession. Listen, church, this is this this arms up aren't just symbolic of surrender. The words aren't just symbolic in nature. Baptism is not something, and it's meant about 20 years ago they started saying, oh, you uh, confess your faith in baptism. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says for the remission of your sins. The can, repentance is not just for just so you can say, oh, I'm sorry. It's so that, th- th- that a cleansing process can begin inside of your heart. There is power in your words, and there is power in what you say. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, I know you know this, words of confession. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. They, of course, Peter preached, and he told them, you know, you guys are sorry. You just killed the Savior. Can you imagine that? Oh, my goodness. And they said, oh, what do we do? What shall we do? They asked. They literally asked that question. All the other apostles there, Peter, Bo, he's being a typical of Peter. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. Not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but in the name of Jesus. What's it matter? Because the name, the word Jesus Christ is the most powerful name in the entire world. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, at the word Jesus, at the name Jesus, every knee will will bow and every tongue confess. God help us to recognize the truth. Words truly matter. The Bible says every jot and every tittle will be fulfilled. There's not anything in there that's not in there intentionally. And if we're not willing to study to show ourselves approved, to understand the word of God, how weak we must be in our true relationship with God because we think, of, we think less of his word than he thinks of it. Help us, Lord. Repent, be baptized, every one of you. And so when he calls us to repent, he awaits the surrender of our tongue. In faith, and he responds to that faith. The words we speak today, I realize that. We're going to stand in a moment. We're going to have prayer for some people. The words that we speak have meaning. I remember several years ago, I heard somebody pray, and it had such a powerful impact. I saw it. I saw it in my own eyes. I saw the power of their words. I had been praying all my life in Jesus' name. I, we pray for our food in Jesus' name. Amen. We got, what's, our, what's our prayer, baby? Uh, uh, what's our prayer? Yeah, God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By his hands we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. We put on there, you know? Amen. Power. And I was, I was, in, a, I was in a group and we were praying and I heard somebody and I, I began, I thought, God, is that what we're missing? And they prayed by the power of your word and the authority of the name Jesus Christ. I pray, and I began to realize it's not just, oh, in the name of Jesus, I pray. that's great, that's all well, but there is power and there is authority. We come before God, whether in a complaint or in prayer or in whining or crying, he is hearing our prayer. And so it would be better for all of us if we would say in our hearts and in our minds, by the power of God, I'm going to get through this situation in the name of Jesus. I'm going to put some power on this thing. I know it. <laughs> the greatest words, the greatest words we will ever speak are those in relationship to our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The completion of our relationship is built, is built on God and on earth when we are filled with his spirit and we speak in a heavenly language. The completion, I want you to understand, I'm preaching, if you will, Some of us hadn't spoken tongues in a long time because we've not been filled with the Spirit in a long time. A lot of big old eyes out there. Come on. Why have we got such a bad attitude? We come to church. We look it. We walk it. We hadn't been renewed it. (laughs) We hadn't been renewed in the power of God lately. And what we're doing is walking by our works. And that's all well and good. But somewhere in time, we must surrender this this tongue to the power and the ability of God. This is not something I'm making up. This is in Acts chapter 2. Words of truth in Acts chapter 10. Let me give you an example. I'm closing. While Peter yet spake these words, Peter preached. The Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. The, The Jews, okay, that's what they of the circumcision. Peter's preaching, the Holy Ghost falls. Over here, the Jews are like, that's what they're doing. They're like, because 
but they saw something. They heard something. The Bible says, for they heard them speak which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And we commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him. Listen, the comforter that we all want so much was within the power of your tongue. That's just, you know, kind of reminds me of those old commercials. Don't go there because this will happen, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. Man, when you began to say, wait a second, I'm going to get this thing right. I'm going to let Jesus Christ be the king of my heart. I'm going to let Jesus Christ be my Savior, my healer, my provider. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It's not just words. There's power. I want us to stand right now, and there's some people here that need prayer. And I'm going to pray for them. And I know that there's other people in here that I don't know about that need prayer. And we're going to pray for them. And I want people of faith and only of faith. I want somebody in this building that has that faith that said, just just speak the word. That's all you got to do. When I get home, that's going to be fixed. That kind of faith. Okay? Y'all with me? Where's my daughter-in-law, Olivia? Is she working in the back? Olivia, come up here. Amen. Olivia had an emergency appendectomy. God, help me. A few few days ago. She's been hurting all week and all that kind of stuff. But during that time period, they found uh, a cancer in her body. She's 28 years old. And the best daughter-in-law of any daughter-in-law anybody could ever have, including including this man over here. Love you, bro. I got the best. She's amazing. But more important than her and how she is, is our Savior. There is power in the name of Jesus. If you need healing today, and I don't care what it's for, I do not care. I'm telling you, I went to a church. I had three crushed murderers in my back right about here. And I forgot what they numbered on me. Right about here. I was in a car wreck. I went to a church, and during church, God healed my body totally, immediately, completely. My wife had a dog, a chihuahua. The dog was named Angel, but we didn't think he was that. We thought Diablo, but my point is this. She loved that dog, and she prayed, Lord, I want my dog back today by 5 o'clock. Been gone for a week or so. I want my dog back today by 5 o'clock in Jesus' name. My children wanted a swing set. We didn't have the money for the swing set. I said, children, come here. Sit on the floor right here. Let's pray. Let's ask God. Let's ask God. Let's put our words. Let, let our words be known in heaven. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you see my children. You see their heart. You see the swing they want. By the end of the day, that swing set was delivered to our house with no input from us. I'm telling you, we serve a God. That our words, not only do they matter to each other, but I want you to start confessing right now. Those of you that are dealing with situations, I want you to begin to confess. Lord Jesus, I give you this. I put it in your hands. And I pray by the power and the authority of the name of Jesus that you would work in my situation. Lord, I, I want this. But Lord, I want your will above everything. Come on, if you got a problem in your life, you need a healing in your life, God wants to heal you today. I want you to come to the front. I'll put my mask on. We're going to pray over you in the name of Jesus. If you need a healing, come on. This, this church cannot be this full without people that need need of healing. By the power and the authority of the name of Jesus, I walk before this altar. In the name of Jesus, come on, you have relationship problems, finance problems. You got health issues, bone issues. We're going to pray when everybody gets here. Come on, just keep praying. You that are up here began to pray now. Began to ask God to help you. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, we got more coming. Come on. You need a job. You need a pay raise. You need strength. We serve an almighty, an almighty Savior in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, help us. God, strengthen our faith. Strengthen our mind. Give us words that we confess your healing. Right now, begin to confess. God, I trust you to heal my body in the name of Jesus, I pray. I trust you to take care of my job in the name of Jesus right now. Oh, God, I pray. Come on, let's worship him as we pray through this crowd. In the name of Jesus, if you can help us pray by the great power of faith in the name of Jesus.
us just not just with our heart, but with our words. You are Lord over our situation. We are your servants. We give you glory and honor. We give you praise. We worship you and we pray over the situation by the power and the authority of your word and in the name of Jesus Christ we pray.
future. And I want you to begin to pray for them. So I'm going to ask all of our kids. I know this is going to be very crazy. Can we bring them up here? Can we bring all the kids up here? Oh, I'll oh, keep them off. I'll bring them up anyway. Oh, y'all come on up. that cord. Put your foot in front of it. There you go. Come on over here, y'all. Come on. Come on. Follow me. All the way over. All the way this way. All right. This is the... This is two generations for me, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all come back over here. Get glad. I want everybody to see you. Amen. And these teachers, God bless them. It's my fault, but it's okay. I want us to pray over this future. Amen. We're going to pray over the future. Can we do that? These kids are all kin to y'all in some way, shape, or form, if not by you, by the blood of Jesus. So we're going to pray in the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord God, we come before you and we ask you, Lord Jesus, to touch this future generation. We ask you, Lord God, by your power and authority to, to touch their minds and hearts. Lord God, give them a desire, a great desire to follow you. I pray in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory and honor. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're already doing. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Oh, wow. Amen. Okay, God bless y'all. Y'all go get off the mic right now. I'm just kidding. Go that way. Amen. I wanted people to see them. Uh, you see the back of their jacket? It says, the cape. It says, future world changer. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Where's the home? Yeah. All right, we're going to worship for a little bit. We've got to find out the child. We're going to be baptized. We're excited about that.